Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! There was a warning today that the battle against childhood obesity is being lost before children even leave home for school. Public Health England found under 10s are eating half the daily recommended amount of sugar at breakfast. And by the end of the day, many have exceeded it by more than three times. And alarmingly, most parents are unaware, as our health editor, Rachel Younger, reports. If breakfast is the most important meal of the day, how come... Every morning, us kids eat and drink half of all the sugar we should have in the whole day before the school bell rings. It's a simple question with an equally straightforward answer for families like the Cartwrights. A bowl of cereal is still the quickest, easiest way to feed the kids. And in the busy morning rush before school, good intentions to swap to porridge often go out the window. They mostly want the chocolate ones. <laughs> You try and save those for special occasions, but it doesn't always work. But you hide good cereals. I do hide the cereals sometimes. But then they find them. <laughs> <laughs> it means, along with some yoghurt and fruit juice, this is how much sugar Maya had for breakfast. The equivalent of three sugar cubes. The recommended maximum daily sugar intake for four to six-year-olds is just five cubes of sugar. While for seven to ten-year-olds, like Maya, it's still only six cubes. And yet a survey of a thousand children in England found that under 10s are consuming on average three times that. Would it be fair to say we're now in the grip of a childhood obesity epidemic? Well, we certainly know that a fifth of children who are starting primary schools, so that's four to five year olds, are overweight or obese. And by the time they leave primary school, over a third of them are overweight or obese. The other important thing to note is that uh, children who are overweight or obese attracts through into adulthood. And that's when it begins to get really serious. The human cost in type 2 diabetes and heart disease that results from that also weighs heavily on the NHS. But although there is to be a tax on sugary drinks, the government shelved much of its proposed childhood obesity strategy, meaning what we're actually getting, despite this intuitive and interactive app, is more of a gear shift than a game changer. Rachel Younger, ITV News. Now, there's a warning that children are consuming half of their recommended daily sugar allowance by the time they leave school in the morning. Public Health England says the average child eats the equivalent of three cubes of sugar, that's 11 grams, as part of their breakfast. Most of that uh, buried in cereal, I would have thought. The recommended daily maximum is five cubes of sugar for four to six-year-olds, six cubes for seven to ten-year-olds. That's the equivalent of uh, teaspoons, of course. But according to the National Diet and Nutrition Survey, by the end of the day, the average child has consumed three times more than that. That's an awful lot of sugar, isn't it? More than one in five children start primary school overweight or indeed obese. That rises to more than one in three children starting secondary school. Sugar is just present in lots of foods, um, lots of foods and everyday drinks. So parents buy things sometimes that they think are relatively healthy, like breakfast cereal or yogurt and actually they've got quite a lot of sugar in quite often so it's a good idea to read the label and to get a sense of how much um, sugar you're buying. Let's speak now to the nutritionist and sugar expert Rick. Hey hello to you Rick, happy new year, thanks for joining us on Sky News. Why is sugar bad for us? Well, Kay, you know, I, I think the thing is we're in a sugar overload. I mean, we've got a society now where a big proportion of the population are, are overweight or obese or heading that way, and sugar certainly doesn't help with that. Um, I'm really pleased with the announcements of, of Public Health England with their, with their new app and things like that. I do think we need to do more. Um, a little bit of sugar is good. It provides a little bit of energy, but we're really going way overboard. And, you know, I used to teach kids years ago. I uh, started out teaching kids actually in the, in the late 80s, and they certainly didn't have the same problems as we as we have uh, have have today yeah okay so it's about the added sugar isn't it i mean presumably we get enough sugar in um fructose with fruit etc 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 and and sugar even in carbohydrate to a certain extent isn't there so um what do parents need to do how can they learn from that 
Well, I think the thing is that you want to keep your sugar intake, um, you know, as part of you said of the fruits because it comes with the fiber and the whole fruit rather than fruit juice. Actually, you know, especially if the fruit juice is a, a concentrated fruit juice, and go for things that are uh, that are that are natural. You know, that berries can be sweet as well, and you can educate your kids um, over time to have less sugar. You don't have to necessarily do it overnight, but if we keep it natural, as you said, the the, the there are fruits and natural uh, sugars in fruits, and when they're binded with the with the fibre, it's a much better way to, to get them um, rather than all the hidden sugars that are around. You know, I think the hidden sugars, I think the companies that produce um, a lot of our goods need to really step up to the plate even more and stop, you know, stop the amounts that are completely unnecessary. There's no need for some of the amounts of sugar that are in there. They're going to be sweet with even half or a third of what, of what they're putting in. Okay, so it's, we were talking particularly this today about cereal, and we know that there's a lot of added sugar in cereal, but there's a lot of hidden added sugar in lots of food that we might give to our kids. Well, there is. You know, even some of the, the healthy food bars that you think you're buying and you think you're making the right choice are actually got tonnes of... Uh, Oses in them. I call them the OSEs on the end because you know they've got dectrose, uh, uh, sucrose, sucralose, etc., and they're hidden in there. And uh, they could be in things like I said, like in the in the the yogurts, the yogurt drinks, uh, the the healthy food bars that are maybe not so healthy. And certainly there might be a whole lot more as you, uh, in even some of the healthier uh, cereals. So it's really a bit of a minefield, I think. You know, as a parent, it's I know it's a uh, you know when people are busy, it's a it's a hard job, but you've Got to keep your eye on it. Labels, reading labels, um, the traffic light, sy uh, light system certainly gives some help, but you've really got to pay attention to what you're what you're giving them because uh, yeah, there's a lot of hidden stuff out there. Yeah, I always just think baked beans and a baked potato was really healthy, but of course it's not, is it? Because there's loads of sugar in baked beans. So lots of kids and adults uh, will have had a lot of sugar over Christmas and New Year. Where do they start from today? What should they give their kids tomorrow morning for their breakfast? Well, let, let's sort of go back to, you know, the weather's quite cold. Let's go with porridge, you know, porridge with some lovely berries. I'm such a fan of berries. Um, if you give them that, and even if you put in just a, a little bit of um, a honey or agave, so not getting too, uh, too much sugar, but certainly the porridge with the berries is a lovely place to, to start. You can also get some um, whole grain cereals that don't have um, added sugars in there and also some of the mueslis. There are some really healthy ones out there that the sweetness will come from the nuts and the fruits and not necessarily the added sugars. That's a great place to start. And then maybe on some mornings as well, we don't need to have cereal every morning. You know, um, you could uh, give you know your kids some um, some scrambled eggs, for example, and as you said, some, some baked beans on toast as long as the, the bread's not laden with sugar and all also, the beans are a, uh, a low-fat uh, sugar a variety as well. I think variety is the key. I, I'm a big fan of giving kids uh, uh, smoothies in the morning as well. So you might do a fruit and vegetable combination. So maybe give them some, uh, and I know this sounds a bit odd, but give them some spinach with banana and date and some rice milk, for example. They don't taste the spinach. They get the, the sweetness from the banana and the date. And you're getting some greens in, because the other thing is we're not getting enough of our, of our greens either. Good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Thank you. Spinach with banana and date. I know that my son would have said, yummy, mummy, that sounds sensational. Uh, what about you? What do you give uh, to your kids for their breakfast? And given what we've just been uh, telling you and how they have more than half of their daily input of sugar just at breakfast time, uh, how will you potentially... Uh, change that up. Uh, let us know your thoughts. I always have banana in the morning. I know a lot of people think that that's uh, a carbohydrate, but it's a slow-release carbohydrate. Porridge is a good thing as well. Oh, you see, I'm lecturing now because I happen to have lost a bit of weight not eating sugar. Blah, blah, blah. I've been